Kendrick Lamar said all your dogs getting buried, but NC State fans got two underdogs that were rooting to come out on top. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things just a little bit further? Do you ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check all of these out today at NissanUSA.com. Happy Friday, Sweet 16 game day. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. We're going to start here with NC State against Marquette before we dive later into NC State and Stanford. Yesterday, we walked through Marquette's schedule and how they got to where they currently are, 27-9, second in the Big East. Today, we're going to look a little deeper into the numbers of why Marquette is Marquette. Offensively, Marquette averages about 78.3 points a game. NC State is 76.4. Rebounding, Marquette averages about 32.8 boards a game. NC State is 35. Assist, Marquette is sitting at 15.8, a staggering number. NC State is 12.8. Marquette averages 9.9 turnovers a game. NC State is 9.6. Field goal percentage, Marquette is 47.8. NC State is 45. Three-point shooting, Marquette is 35.8. NC State is 34.7. And free throw shooting, Marquette is 71.5. And NC State is 73.4. Kenton, what are some early takeaways you grab from these numbers here? You know, I think that this is this game on paper seems to be much more evenly matched than many people are giving it credit for in terms of, you know, just these raw numbers. But I think that there's a little bit more context and story that goes into these numbers that kind of explain why, you know, the differences between um, Marquette and NC State season, even though the the can't get right factor that we had going on earlier this season is a bit unquantifiable, right? Like you, you can't quantify the fact that, where there were games where our offense was was on an absolute heater and we couldn't stop anybody. And then there were games where, you know, we were locked down defensively, but we couldn't a uh, super Walmart from the parking lot, you know, so it, it's, it's, I think it's, it's very interesting to see how these numbers bear out in terms of the raw numbers, but obviously we're here to break that down a little bit deeper for you. Yeah. Flipping through these, it was a little surprising how close these numbers were in a lot of categories. You look at scoring, Marquette is considered one of the most efficient scoring teams in the country, and NC State is really not that far behind them in terms of points per game. Basically two points per game less than Marquette. That's really not that big of a difference. Yeah. Defensively, Marquette gives up 72.8. NC State gives up 73.9. That's not that big of a difference either. So perhaps Kevin Keats and NC State can put together a, a pretty solid game plan on how to score efficiently on Marquette because their defense is not exactly their strong suit. It's definitely more on the offensive side of things. But, you know, again, they they say numbers never lie, but I I don't exactly think the numbers are telling the full story here. The buzzword that I've heard all week is inverted screening. It's something that Marquette thrives on. Kenton called them pick and roll merchants yesterday, which is extremely true. They are going to try and pick and roll us through Middle Earth. And so that will be a that'll be a great challenge for DJ Burns to try and defend this. And we've seen the type of troubles that he can get into when a team goes at him, you know, possession after possession after possession. And if they find some success, they can really exploit it. So inverted screening here, it's basically take your average run of the mill screen. You have a ball handling guard. You have your big run up and screen that player so they can either move around for a shot or move around for another pass. An inverted screen is exactly the opposite. A smaller guard, at least the most successful version of this, they will often screen their own defender into the big's defender, basically a double screen almost, and the big will then roll for what a lot of times is an easy dunk. 
Marquette thrives off of this. Tyler Kolick is a master at this. We'll get into his numbers in just a second, but he averages nearly eight assists a game. He is a maestro with the basketball in his hands. And so Marquette is going to look to bait DJ Burns into this all night, or even Middle Brooks and Diara, who the, whoever the big is. They want to pull the big away from the basket and then roll right back in behind them for easy buckets all night. NC State has got to figure out a way to successfully defend that. But not to mention, Marquette can also shoot it pretty well too. Colick can shoot it. Cam Jones can shoot it. Joplin can shoot it. They have weapons. And so this will be a lot for NC State to account for this evening in Dallas. I'm going to tell you what. How does Houston handle all the ball screens? They blitz them. You know what NC State should probably do here? If you want to trust the big to handle the ball and make the right pass, okay, let's see how that works out for you. And granted, to Marquette's credit, it has worked out very well for him. And obviously, NC State wouldn't be the first team to blitz it. But if they blitzed it and ran a matchup zone whenever the big, they saw the bigs setting up to run that type of motion, I don't know. I think that's a little bit more difficult to handle because once you get in that matchup zone situation, it's like, oh, no, he's rolling. LOL, I was going to be here anyway, loser. Like, you know, but I'm just saying, it's just something to think about there. Some of the key names to look into, and I've already mentioned two of them, to the guards, Cam Jones and Tyler Kolick. Cam Jones averages about 17 points a game, 50% shooting percentage, and about 41% from the perimeter. He can light it up from anywhere on the court. That's, that's a tall task to deal with. The other one is Tyler Kolick, and Tyler Kolick is about as good of a point guard as you will find in college basketball. He can score. He can distribute. He can create for others. He sees the court extremely well. As I mentioned, nearly eight assists a game. This is paired with 15.3 points a game, 49% shooting, 38% from beyond the arc, 85% free throw shooter. He can do everything exceptionally well. And Tyler Kolick, I think, is the X factor for Marquette in this game. If he can orchestrate an offense that draws Burns away from the bucket, it's going to be a tough night for NC State. They're going to have to really figure out how to control Kolick in this game. That, that is a massive key. The other two players of note are Osto Igadaro. He's a very versatile big man, six foot 11, averages 13.6 points a game, 6.8 boards, 2.9 assists, 58% shooting. And David Joplin, power forward, 11 points a game, four boards, 36% from beyond the arc. So they have a big that can shoot it from beyond the arc. That is another weapon for NC State to have to deal with. So Marquette has a lot of weapons, not to say that Casey Morcell and Jaden Taylor don't have something to say about that, but this is a, this is a Marquette offense that's very dynamic. It's a tough test tonight in the Sweet 16. Yeah, and I, I, would, say, I would say that, you know, when I look at this team and, and all the problems they could present, I think the key for NC State is to trust your keys in terms of, of you know, what your coverage assignments are, and to know, okay, when this guy's being the, the picker, or when this guy's being the role, when this guy is setting the pick, he's normally the role man, or he's normally slipping, or he's normally popping for the three, whatever the case may be, trust those things and stay in front of guys like you've been doing for the past however many games, right? I mean, with all due respect, if you can check RJ Davis, you can check Cole, with all due respect. Like that, that, yes, their games are very different, but if Casey can stay in front of RJ, and I know some people are going to scream, well, RJ went off for 30 on how many shots? I think we'll be all right. I like those odds. I like that. But uh, very seriously, you know, and, and it's going to be interesting to see which big they try to pull away from the rim. I got a lot of faith in NC State in terms of this team. You know, they're, they're one of the hottest teams in the country right now. They're a team that just refuses to go into the light. They're a team that refuses to go away gently. They're a team that just, you know, People talk about Team of Destiny a lot. I'm going to tell you, a team that squeaked into the tournament by the hairs on their chinny, chin, chin, that is now doing what they're doing, I'm riding with the pack all the way. Something NC State will have to be relentless in tonight is rebounding. The rebounding effort has to be maybe the best that they've had all season long. Marquette is not a team you want to give three, four, five chances to on a single possession. You want to limit them to one or two shots down the floor as often as you possibly can. So we look to Mo Diara. We look to Ben Middlebrooks. We look to Casey Morcell. 
This has to be an all-hands-on-deck rebounding effort. A multitude of offensive rebounds for Marquette tonight is a very quick death sentence for NC State. I can assure you that. So boards, boards, boards. Board man gets paid, as they say. I know. NC State, Marquette, Sweet 16 in Dallas. 11 seed versus the 2 seed. We have history with Marquette. We have a little shady history with Shaka Smart. NC State didn't expect to be here. A lot of people are saying they don't belong here. They're a fraud. They're going to get exposed by Marquette. Hasn't stopped us at any other point in this run. And that's what makes them dangerous. Coming up next, we're getting into Fan Friday, covering our top comments of the week after a quick word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by the spring cleaning champions, Manscaped. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0. Watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra features a dual LED spotlight to guide you through the darkest winter debris. Navigate with confidence in your delicate areas. If you're worried about making a mess, not to worry, this bad boy is waterproof. Shave in the shower, in the bath, or even in the ocean if you feel so inclined. Spring cleaning also doesn't just apply to the nether regions. Get the full grooming experience with Manscaped Signature Beard Hedger Pro Kit and Handyman Electric Face Shaver. Whether you're looking to craft your signature look or clean up that neckline, these are always the right tools for the job. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code Locked On at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with code Locked On, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at Manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. Our second sponsor of the day is Better Together. Is your bracket busted but you want to stay in the game? Introducing Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork triumphs talent and you can play with your friends and not against them. Just pick more or less on real-time player stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds, and then climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social daily fantasy sports movement. Better Together is the first cooperative daily fantasy application. It provides a sense of camaraderie and enhances the social experience of watching sports. You can even look at this as a way to stay connected with your friends if you aren't able to watch sports together in person. This will put your group chat to the test and lets you prove that yours is the best. Download Better Together now from the App Store and use sign-up code LOCKEDON for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. Join in on a contest over this weekend and remember code LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. Middle portion of our Friday show, it's now time for Fan Friday. Without further ado, let's get into it. First one here comes from our guy, Micah Venable. What's Marquette got for big burns? Well, Marquette prides themselves on pace and energy. And this is a product of Shaka Smart, of course, who has always had his basketball teams play with this function. They're going to want to wear out DJ Burns. They want to they want to routinely have him out of position. I mentioned inverted screening. They're trying to basically bait him into that all night long. Well, if they can get him to fall into that trap, it's going to be rough sailing for NC State. They want to wear him out and take him out of this game. And this is on both ends of the floor. NC State's guards are really going to have to shoulder some of this load here. They're they're going to have to be able to hit the open shots when DJ finds them when he gets inevitably doubled uh, more often than not. So this is, in every sense of the imagination, this is going to have to be a team win. I wouldn't be surprised if Marquette is bringing traps all night long. Their big is a little soft. He's got soft hands down there. He's, he, you know, it, he's not the type of guy that you would expect to kind of go one up with uh, DJ all night long. So, I, I suspect that Grayson's right in terms of including him in a lot of these sets is what they're going to do to kind of try to wear him out and tire him out on the defensive end so he's not as effective on the offensive end. Next one comes from MC05. They say Marquette played their last six games of the regular season and the Big East tournament without their All-American Tyler Kolek. Two of those were against UConn. They were also without Oso Iguodaro and Kolek against Creighton. The record would be even better. So based on this, it would sound like Marquette is kind of coming all back together here at the right time. We looked at their schedule yesterday, and it almost seemed that they did kind of limp in to the postseason. 
this would certainly explain why. When you yeah. have an All-American that's not able to be on the floor, you're not the same team. Once you get Kolek back healthy going into the NCAA tournament, you're probably going to experience immediate success. That's what they have found in their first two games of this tournament. I think they showed some moments of not looking as dominant as you might have expected them to. They actually they found themselves in some close games with both Western Kentucky and Colorado, so they're not unbeatable. In the words of rapper Rimble, I just touch his shoulder, so I know that he is touchable. This this Marquette team is very much so touchable. Like they're not they're not Teflon, but I I do agree that this is important information to explain that ending of the regular season um, for them. But again, this team, even with Kolek, they're beatable. It is possible. It is not something that's like, hey, it's been a great season, y'all. You know, this is this is it. Uh, we we've got no shot here. No, they're you know they're a very good team, very good collection of players. They're well they're well assembled, and obviously guard playing in Shaka smart system pivotal. But I think we got a shot. I think this is a perfect segue into the next one. Comes from Bradley M. Next game is win win scenario. Obviously we want to win and keep moving, but if we lose, the turnaround is remarkable. Has buzz for the future in the transfer portal and recruiting, and we hope for more success on the court. If it ends at the Sweet 16, got to be happy with that. But let's keep rolling. Yeah, I, I do think a lot of NC State fans feel exactly this way. And it's kind of what we've been talking about up until this point. All of this NCAA tournament play, it feels a bit like a bonus. Now, don't get me wrong. We really want to win this game. We want to see how far we can take this thing because this is the most historic run that a lot of us have even been alive for. We want to beat Marquette. We want to see who's after that. We want to get to the Final Four. All of this is relatively new for NC State fans, or at least it's been a long time for those who have experienced this type of run. So there's a lot to look forward to in the trickle down of this run in terms of recruiting and transfer portal, yes. But right now, that's secondary. We have a game to play in the Sweet 16, no less, and we want to keep this thing rolling. Why not us? Absolutely. And as I've said all along during this run, expect nothing. Appreciate everything. Enjoy everything. Because this team, you know, who can honestly say, I knew it all along, this was a Sweet 16 team? Who? Who among us after that pit game was like, yeah, we knew it. We, You smelt it in the air as as uh, Hinton was was dancing on our boys. You, you, you just felt it. You had a feeling in your bones, this is a Sweet 16 team. Come on, let's just be honest, right? We were hoping to get an NIT bid at that point. And now look at us. So, this is a win-win, but to quote Fred Durst, keep rolling, 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 rolling. Let's do it. Next one comes from Gregor's Outdoors. Where does all the pressure rest? Correct, on the higher number two seed and its season coach. If the pack can lead early or make a late run comeback, the Golden Eagles will have their hands and minds full. Pressure is real in March, and the pack is playing with house money. They've overachieved to this point, and there is absolutely no shame and ending their season here, that's exactly why they're still dangerous. It will come down to last-minute free throws and who makes the most. I am 10 toes down with you, Gregor's Outdoors. I think you summarize this very well. All of the pressure is on Marquette. They're the two seed, maybe even could have been a one seed if they had all of their pieces healthy for the entire season. They're that kind of talented. And so, sure, NC State is currently the darling of this tournament. We're the highest remaining seed in the 11 seed. But a lot of people know what Marquette is, and they're probably not giving NC State a shot in this. And that is where we are dangerous. In yeah. March, we all know anything can happen. No one is unbeatable. That's exactly why we've been saying things like that for a game like this one. You've had basically the entire week to prep for Marquette. I can't wait to see what we look like on Friday night. Anything is possible. They've proven that. Even in the moments where we thought they would break, they still succeed. This game is just yet another version of that. All of the pressure is Marquette. We're playing free. We're playing loose. We got nothing to lose. I want to see us with that mindset again here in the Sweet 16. You're absolutely right. The pressure is on them. And you know what I think is interesting about what you said and the NC State doesn't have a shot we were at least six point underdogs in, I believe, every game after multiple Duke. times over this run. Yes. You want to know another team that did a similar thing to that? Not too long. Uh, we ain't gonna get into that. But <laughs> the reality is very simple here. Okay, you're absolutely right. 
all the pressure is on them, let it rip. Just go out there and leave not a single bullet in that chamber. When we're done, when we walk off that court, be it we ready to raise an elite eight banner and keep going forward and, you know, whatever that may look like, where we'd be taking on, I believe, will be the winner of Houston and Duke, which, whoa, whoa, what a, what a game either one of those would be, right? Who expects the 11 seed? Who would say, oh, man, DJ Burns is on the line, and if he misses these, he's the disappointment of the Wolfpack season. The entire country loves DJ Burns right now. The entire country. Oh, DJ Horn's on the line. All the pressure's in the world on him. Oh, man, everybody will look at him like he's a loser if he comes back home without it. I beg your pardon? DJ Horn is the first son of Raleigh right now. He yeah. just is. You, you can't. You can't make any argument against a, a guy, a Raleigh native, who, by the way, I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, well, he didn't pick us out of high school. No, that's not correct. State didn't pick him out of high school. Who on this team would people look at and say, oh, man, Mo Diara, Ramadan Mo, and all he's done now goes out the window if he misses these two. Listen, these guys are beloved. That pressure is all on Kolek and the gang over there. Last one here from Blind Lemon Jello. Reality may be strong, but the brand happens over time. You need more continuous success to be jamming that one up. They're on the road right now, that's for sure. So these comments are in context for our episode saying that NC State's basketball brand right now is strong. And yes, of course, you do need much more continued success. I, I strongly disagree. Let me let me cut you off here, Grayson. Right. I rarely ever cut you off, but I, I need to say this. Do y'all not realize what Clemson was and Clemson football was in 2007, six? Clemsoning. Fast forward to 2015. What were they? Don't get me wrong. I understand that that's a very long stretch that NC State didn't have. We're talking about the men's and women's team. The men are just now catching up to the women who have been dominating since immediately after Grayson and I graduated. Like, I want to say they won the three back-to-back -back right after we graduated. Maybe it was us holding the team back all along. Who knows? But <laughs> in all seriousness, the women's brand has always been there. It's always been consistent. The men are just now catching up. I, I'll say this. I don't care who you are or what you are or what's going on. If you find yourself in a final four, your brand is now legit. Look at Florida Atlantic. Look at what happened with their brand overnight from a, a run to the final four. I'm telling you right now, if the men find a way to win this game and beat the winner of Duke Houston, NC State and their fans and their players and the old alums and uh, Coach Wittenberg and Thurl Bailey and Cozell McQueen and all of that, Ernie Myers and, and company, we're so back. It's time to hit that if this team goes there further. That's just my personal opinion. No, I think that's a great point. And, I mean, I, I do think you need a more consistent model of success, but you can absolutely raise your brand in just a couple weeks of March. You can absolutely do that. I think I think FAU is a perfect example of that. Their coach just cashed in on that and took a new job up at Michigan. It can happen that fast if you overachieve what you're expected to in this month. NC State basketball, we all know the storied history, and Kenton hit the nail on the head here. If you do beat Marquette, and you do find a way to beat whoever's next, and you hit that final four mark, NC State is going to be everywhere, everywhere on the on social media, everywhere in the college basketball world. We will be chanting as loud as we can possibly chant that NC State is back. You started to hear a little bit of this from the national college basketball guys saying, you know, college basketball is better when the three teams in the triangle are booming yeah. like they used to be in the 70s and 80s. If you reach a final four this year with this team on this run, you, that's all you're going to be hearing about in the media. So you absolutely can skyrocket your brand in just a couple weekends. And NC State is right on the brink of a major breakthrough here if they are able to succeed in these next couple games. Rounding out our Friday show, we're going to discuss the women's Sweet 16 game against Stanford out in Portland after a quick word from our sponsors. This week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, 
these guys are able to take it to the next level. The NC State Wolfpack are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised everyone with a powerful performance in their first two games of the NCAA tournament. Wins over Texas Tech and Oakland have them set up to play Marquette tonight in the Sweet 16. They say win life, go rogue, and that's exactly what the Wolfpack have done. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Last couple of minutes here of our Friday show, our women's basketball team, also in the Sweet 16, they play against Stanford tonight, the two seed in this region. This is all the way out in Portland, Oregon, quite the hike for NC State to make cross country, but make no mistake about it, they're ready to play. The resounding sentiments I've heard around this game, and Stanford is predominantly a women's basketball power. They won the national championship just a couple of years ago. Their coach in Tara Vanderveer is a legend. They bring in routinely highly touted players. In this game in particular, though, I think that Isaiah James and Sinai Rivers can have the superior guard play, but I've heard that Stanford may have the advantage in the front court. But Kenton, you have some thoughts on this. What say you? So here's the thing. I do think that Stanford has a slight edge in the front court, but not for the reason that many people think. Everybody attributes it to Cameron Brink, who, like, with all due respect, she is an amazing shot blocker, phenomenal at it. Her timing, her anticipation, it's special. It's different. Her rebounding, also very high-level game in, game out. Her ability to score against really good bigs is a little bit questionable, to say the least. Hmm. Her ability to show up and dominate when there are big-name bigs across from her or bigs that just defensively are extremely sound, a little bit more questionable. And I'll tell you, like I said, when you talk about the front court and like what they are or not and what gives them that advantage, it's her combined with Kiki Irafian. I I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Kiki is about the same level of score, and she can step out and stroke it from deep a little bit better than Brink. So again, I'm not saying either one of them are three-point marksmen. I'm not saying either one of them are are like, oh my God, you got to watch them wherever they are. Those two down low, they give you problems. They both go at about 6'4 or so. They both are very long. They're both, you know, very rangy. They're going to give you problems. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to lie and say that. However, I don't think that Brink is that player that's like, she's going to give this team 30 and 20. And if if she does, State deserves to lose this game. They deserve to lose it. They, They deserve everything they have coming because, you know, a lot of people say, well, it was the foul trouble against Iowa State and uncharacteristically bad fouls and tight whistles that kept Iowa State in it. That's one argument. Another argument is when there's a a big that puts their weight on Brink, she tends to struggle a little bit. And River Baldwin, I don't know if y'all have seen her, but, you know, not exactly a string bean that one. So, you know, I'd, I'd love to see her get some touches down low, but I'd love to see her defensively make it really, really tough on Brink and company down low. NC State really needs to harp on what got them here, and that is the Mm -hmm. scoring ability of Isaiah James and Sanaya Rivers. Going into last game against Tennessee, I said that this is a game where NC State needs to live on superior guard play, and I believe the two of them combined for 42 points. You're going to need another one of those efforts to knock off Stanford. This is the type of game where if you go through another cold stretch like you did in the third quarter, you might not live to tell the tale. You're going to need basically consecutive second quarters where everything is clicking for NC State. And you just you throw a punch and then you keep throwing punches. You keep hitting shots. You keep generating turnovers. And you're relentless for all four quarters. NC State needs to be absolutely relentless to knock off Stanford. Stanford's probably going to have the crowd at their side as it's obviously on the West Coast. They're mm-hmm. going to feel at home. NC State needs to go and prove that they are the team that had the most ranked wins in the country. They are the team that can play with anyone if they are firing on all cylinders. We know that they have the capability, but they have to show up and get it done. And and I'm going to say something here. It's not just about, I do agree that we need uh, Isaiah James and Sadai Rivers to show up at a high clip, but there are some players. They're about due for one. Mimi Collins and Madison Hayes, they're about due. They're about due for that game where you look up and you're like, 
oh my God, what, did did Mimi have 20 today? Yeah. Did Madison give us a cool 20 and 10? Like, what happened there? And I, I want to say, I want to say River Baldwin is kind of in that same category a little bit right now because I've been waiting on her to explode all tournament. But I know that, you know, she's worked her way back through some things and all that. So I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. But the other players are going to have to come along because you're not going to beat Stanford with just a player or two rolling at a high clip. You're not going to do it. There, this needs to be a team effort. And that is really who bought or what bought NC State to the dance. When we were dominating top teams in the nation, it wasn't just about Isaiah. It wasn't just about Sinai. It was about everybody coming in and showing up. And then the fact that we have five players that average double digits. We need that. We need everybody. Come on. Come with me. Let's get it rolling. Well, the day is here. It's Friday, and NC State has two teams in the Sweet 16, just one of four schools. Wolfpack fans, enjoy this. Enjoy every moment of both of these runs. The men are obviously trying to continue their remarkable run. They're on a seven-game win streak. They want to make it eight, and then nine, and then so on and so forth. NC State Marquette tonight in Dallas. Marquette is favored by six and a half. That game tips off at 7.09 Eastern time. NC State against Stanford tonight in Portland. That game tips off 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. NC State, man, what a time to be an NC State Wolfpack fan. It is mm-hmm. it is so good to feel this level of excitement around NC State basketball in March again. And we're not done here. We got more work to do. They've been saying, why not us? There is no reason that both of these teams are not capable of jumping to another round. They got more fight in them. If nothing else, you know they have fight in them. And when they're unpredictable, anything can happen. We talked a lot about the men's team playing with house money because they shouldn't have been in the tournament per se. The women's team was predicted to finish similarly or below where the men's team was in the ACC for the women this year. Right. I'm sorry to tell you, even though Westmore has set the bar so high and won so many games against uh, top teams, that is also a team that is playing with house money. That is also a team that has a top 10 recruiting class coming in next year. That is also a team that this portal is looking real thick. That that portal is looking, it's some, it's some prospects in there that can absolutely get it done. So with that in mind, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that both of these teams, hey, it's not your money. Let it rip. Let it ride. Let it rip. That is the resounding sentiment from us here on Friday. That'll do it for us here for the week. Big night tonight for NC State. I am already anxious thinking about this. We got two games to win. Let's go get them. Thank you all so much for joining us throughout the course of this week and here on Friday. Be sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments in the comment box. Maybe give us some final score predictions. Tell us how you think both of these games are going down tonight in the Sweet 16. And if you have not already, mash that subscribe button, tell a friend to tell a friend to do the same. Quick reminder, obviously there will be a live show following the NC State Marquette Sweet 16 game on Friday night. Be on the lookout for that. It'll be tweeted out. We'll mention it on our YouTube community page. We'll see you all tonight on our live show, but until then, go Pack. Go Pack.